and uh, my sincere thanks to all of you for inviting me here. Uh, our friends from G Healthcare uh, as well as from other industries to be a part of uh, your academic sessions and we will be more clear to join with you and uh, to not have a more user association going forward. Uh, I actually thought of giving this lecture completely on spectacity. Then they have sent me a mail just uh, saying that this is the very good thing you are going to see. So uh, I don't know who are our PhDs, who are our PhDs, I don't know who are our PhD departments. So I thought I will little bit moderate the topic. So everything has to start from a basic, so I start from that basic. So I actually if you look at I remove the uh, subject line from the slide. So that's what I did today morning. So, so we start with the basics of the CT. I think uh, if you had a lecture on CT yesterday, but I will read the CT not on this thing. Because I cannot uh, take out CT from my eye. So nineteen seventy two was a year where two varieties happened at the moment. One is the invention of CT and second I bought. <laughs> Uh, I cannot separate it, so I have to start from basics. So, uh, here is a good question for you. What is X ray? What is X ray? X rays are part of the number of magnetic radiations, it's okay, but the X property. What is the property of X ray? They penetrate, X property. The ionizing ray, the ionizing radiation is fine. Anything else? Sorry? Fantastic. Why don't you come to the front, front uh, seats? The last seat is a nice answer, you know, for uh, all you can see here. Nice, classy atmosphere. So, what do you see here? X-rays are having certain properties which are like they are electromagnetic radiations. They create a lot of attenuation in the material and uh, they make a penetrate to objects and they make photographic changes. Very interestingly, in diagnostic radiology, we use only two properties. Those two properties, first one is nothing but its penetrability. Second one, when they fall on a fluorescent screen or a photographic plate, they make some changes. So these two properties, if nothing else, we are using only these two, two properties, very useful thing in diagnostic area. Okay? The rest of the properties of x rays are not very important for us. And when x ray passes to an object, it creates something, you know, the object creates some resistance to x-rays, and that is called the linear activation coefficient of you. You know, you know this number, you know this name. Right. So, what is the relationship of this activation with respect to the tissue? Different tissue in our body activate X-rays differently and this is called differential activation. An entire basics of any X-ray equipment, whether it is CT, whether it is capillary, whether it is a simple X-ray machine or a digital X-ray machine, all of them work on one single operating parameter called differential activation. The differential activation is guided by three things basically. The density, the atomic number, and the electron ratio. As we have these parameters closer, the activation goes up. As you see in this test uh, image, this is a CT scan test or X ray test? Just X ray, fine. Great. So you see, you see a lot of dense tissue here. What is this structure here? Heart, the media sphere. We call it as media sphere. So what do you see here? The black color one. Lung. So why are these black? Lung allow more X-rays to pass through it. Sorry? No water, okay. Actually, lung has very low density. Lung's density is almost zero. So, that's there. Nothing else is there. So, it allows allow more X-rays to pass. And now those X-rays fall out of the screen and they on the field, they appear as Whereas in the case of media sphere, we look at the bones, the collar bone, the ribs, then a lot of calcium is there in the bone. So I don't remember this high, they stop all its rays. And those are not reaching much to the film plate and they are appearing as white. So in any way, in any area of the equipment, if you see something white, that means they are called high dense tissue or high atomic number tissue, which you have seen as black is lower on the part. Let's, let's keep that basic rule, you know. Standard in our mind very clearly. So calcium gives more activation, soft tissue gives less activation, and air gives the least activation. Why fat is having no activation? Which is denser, fat or water? Fat is denser than water. Oil bones on water, right? So who is less denser? Fat. That is why fat is having lower activation. Fantastic. So let's see. Uh, see uh, I like apples a lot. Okay, I like apples. So uh, in uh, for two years 
years back, I went to the US to buy some atoms. And I went to a shop. And you can see the PG atoms are kept at you know, 2.2 dollars. If you are taking four projections, it becomes a star pattern. Eight projections, it becomes more star pattern. 
magnetic projection become more and more close to the original object, the more the projection better the image you reconstruct. And this technology is called back projection. So what you will see the X-ray tube it takes place, it passes through patient, undergoes activation and on the detector. And that information is collected across 360 degree around the patient. And then that is transformed into an image by using what? Back projection. So the basic method of image creation in CT is back projection. This is very simple. Multiple shadows are there and shadows are put back to the original spatial objects. Very, very simple process. So CT imaging is very simplified, okay? So why we do this? We can do it in different methods. We can scan, then stop, scan and stop, scan and stop. And that method type of scan is called the conventional axial scan. You can do continuous scan when you move the patient table inside. So you have seen the patient table also here, right? This is the patient table, right? So you can move continuously and in that case you will get data something, data like this. This is called the chemical scan. And if you are using multiple detectors, so of one detector, if you are using multiple detectors, you will get multiple spikes. So the current, all the CT scanners currently done, most of them are multi spike scanners. So, a single slice in one rotation will give you one slice and multi slice will give you multiple slices. So, depending upon the slices, there are different stories now. There are 2 slice system, 16 slice system, uh, 40 slice system, 62 slice system, 128 slice system, 256 slice system, 320. You know, these stories go on. But there is a limit for that story actually. Because the technical outcome of a single slice or a single slice is equal to 264 or 128 slice, then it becomes equal, then there is no difference. So we are thinking really differently how we can go beyond slices. So, so what is your outcome? Once you are done all these scans, you get the anatomical depiction of what is there inside the okay. This is a patient with a trauma who was not under a screening of law and uh, he had a shattered track and a fracture on his uh, right hand. And you can see very interesting the blood vessel is preserved. You can see the blood vessel has a damage. So that's called CT angiogram in trauma invasion. It's called polytrauma study. And here, here you can see uh, the tree of fractured uh, hip bone. And you can see the fractured fragment. And you can see that as a tablet of the area where the joint and socket goes inside, it is uninterrupted. So you can come to this thing. And have a lot of pictures. So this I can pull this back. It's okay. So, this is a piece of reverse step. You know what you see here? Something abnormal is the large lesion there. Are you able to see that? No. Yes. This is a large lesion there. Very interestingly, like, when I give TCT to differentiate an okay, before. What is the difference between a tumor and a normal tissue? What is the difference between tumor and a normal tissue? Tumors are fast growing tissues without any control. Correct? They have some cellular difference, means they will have some difference compared to the normal tissue at the psychology level. But at the radiology level, unfortunately, we cannot differentiate a tumor as well as the normal tissue. But most of the tumors, like uh, my colleague said, in pet, when you give a uh, FDG, it goes to the metabolic getting the more, more metabolic activities. So it gives you more metabolism and concentration of that particular laser in that particular region. Similarly in CT, what you do is you give something called iodinated contrast media. The tumors are growing tissues and more blood always goes to the tumors. So as more blood goes to the tumors, if you give iodinated contrast media, they will go more towards the tumor. Since iodine is having a higher activation number, iodine may be Black in color or white in color? Right. White in color. So that is called contrast augmented scans or contrast enhanced scans. So in CT, if you want to diagnose a mass lesion or you want to differentiate two type of tissues, the one method is to give an external contrast media. Inject it or ingest it or whatever the you want to do. So in this case, if you look at it, actually the liver tissue and the tumor looks almost the same, but as you injected contrast, you can see the contrast goes in, into the tissue. And after some time, you are able to see that the contrast is centrally inside the tumor. So, depending upon the tumor enhancement type, this is called enhancement. Depending upon tumor enhancement type, we can say whether this tumor is a malignant tumor or a benign tumor. 
The malignant tumor will have a fast washing and fast partial. And in this case, the tumor is getting the contrast concentrated inside, and you can compare this to this. The concentration of the, the contrast is retained in the tumor for much longer time. And this is a typical case of hemangioma. It is non cancerous tumor. So just by taking one image, you are not able to get an answer, but you have to take the image in a particular fashion, the periodic way. You have to give contrast and you have to tie it. So, all these give, give you the result which we really want to achieve. That is very good. So, so, that was our basics of CT. So, I think uh, we had good understanding of the basics of CT and it's very clear. So, those were uh, just leaving just briefly. I, I don't know how to crack it out right now. So, uh, uh, Let's see, uh, what is new in CT? Maybe low dose, when the low dose had come, you have been blessed with a baby. Sorry? When the low dose came, you, you are blessed with a baby. No. No, much before. Much before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. So, we will, we will discuss uh, just four things. One is, what is dose in CT? And what is high definition in CT? What is that on CT? And what is the spectral imaging? And we will see a clinical example. I will make sure that I take you through pictures and you know, see that you know, what I can report to you by this reduction. Uh, a lot of innovations have happened in dose reduction. So, Sangha said something on dose reduction. Uh, actually, CT has given the, you know, actually the pathway for dose reduction compared to any other modalities. And CT was the first one to, you know, get it achieved also. Uh, why not? Because CT was considered to be like an anatomical vaccine. So, but immediately we have to work. So, all the engineering team, you know, not only AG, all the builders, our those are manufacturers, developers, they have done this job. And in G, we had started a lot of things. And uh, the remarkable few things, other than the hardware changes, the remarkable, uh, one of the remarkable thing is getting into something called the hybridity reconstruction. Okay, let me ask you one question. What was the reconstruction technique used in CD? Fantastic, great. So, we are now moving from back to something new called vibrative reconstruction. But before getting into vibrative reconstruction, I want to talk a few words about those. What is the unit of those? Close to the patient. Okay, what is the unit of radiation? Now, what is the unit of exposure? Sir? Roger. Exactly. Unit of exposure is Roger. You know what is one one? One ESU charge in one one cc of air. One volt of 